Yeah, thank you, Brian. Um, it's always exciting hosting at home. Not a lot of college golf teams get to host a home event, uh, especially a top 100 golf course like Pete Dye. Uh, so our guys are excited. We've been down there pretty much every day we can be since uh, the end of March, um, trying to get familiar again with um, really the state of West Virginia and Pete Dye because we we traveled so much uh, January through uh, March. But uh, yeah, we're just excited. Golf course in great shape and really can't thank, you know, the staff and the ownership, uh, everybody at Pete Dye that has been so welcoming to us and really trying to make this event special, uh, not only for us, but all the visiting teams. I think it's the largest field we've ever had with uh, 16 teams competing. And, um, you know, like I said, we're we're excited to play at home. Uh, it's really cool to end the regular season uh, with a home event because all the guys are know they're going to compete, you know, whether it's in the top five or as an individual. Obviously, this event will – sort of finish up our qualifying into uh, who's going to go to big 12s. So the guys are excited about that. And um, just something special about playing at home and having all our parents and family and uh, everybody come out and support us. And uh, it just feels right, especially with master's week uh, going on right now and, and getting the hosts at home. It's just a, uh, it's a cool time for golf. Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Uh, just go ahead and unmute your line when you're ready to ask a question for Coach. Hey, Coach. I was looking at the schedule, and a lot of the other tournaments you've gone to are three-day events, and this one is a two-dayer. With the additional number of teams that you have in this, is that kind of a logistical challenge to get it all in? How do you you know, put all that together? Yeah, it's... Uh... That's a good word, logistical challenge or a good <laughs> phrase. Um, you know, it's all dependent on weather. Uh, we move this event from the fall to the spring uh, and you gain a lot of daylight. Uh, you gain a ton because in the fall we had to be wrapped up by like 645 at night on the 36 whole day. Whereas in April, you have close to eight o'clock um, to uh, to play some golf. So as long as we don't have any fog or any sort of rain delay in the morning, uh, we should be able to to get it in. We we have uh, on the 36 hole day, we, you know, the players now ride in carts instead of walk. So that helps pace of play a little bit. Uh, we've sort of gone with a, a new pairing system where my one and two guy will be paired with another team, one and two. Uh, and so um, that kind of helps with pace of play because you're a little comfortable, more comfortable with your uh, teammates so you can kind of you know helps pace a play a little bit so we should be okay as long as we don't get a fog delay um, which we have had um, in the past but you know you've got two days to play 54 holes so you know say we play set of 36 on Monday we get 33 holes we'll just finish up round two uh, in the morning on Tuesday and go straight into round three so that's the way I kind of look at it it's going to be Hopefully we get 36 holes in, but if not, we still have all day Tuesday to, to make that up. And then in terms of just running the tournament, I mean, I know you don't have to have as many as like a pro tournament or anything like that, but still seems like a lot of slots for that. How has, you know, been organizing that working with Pete Diagon? Yes, it's uh, it takes uh, a lot of people and, and the planning for this event really started the day after last year's event. Uh, you know, what can we do better? And, I always try to view it as, you know, if I were to go to a tournament, what do I think would be kind of cool or fun? Uh, and so there's several things that we do that I think are um, unique. Uh, obviously, the greatest shotgun start in college golf uh, with the Mountaineer mascot. Uh, this year, we're also going to do the national anthem. Um, you know, we've got cheerleaders out there and uh, we try to make it a kind of an event. We've got music going and, you know, Pete Dye itself uh, is a really fun uh, golf course it's not you know it's not stuffy you don't feel like you're walking on eggshells out there like it's a it's a fun environment so we want to keep that rolling through our college event so we have music going uh you know at, at the practice areas we have music going on the putting green you can kind of hear it throughout the most of the golf course we have good food uh food stations out on the golf course for the uh for all the players and the coaches instead of having to come in and get a box lunch and take it back out to them we're like hey let's just feed them as they're playing. And uh, so we try to do some cool stuff. So 
that's really the support uh, and hard work of Pete Dye and their food and beverage staff to to make that happen and uh, just kind of create a fun event. Fun event. Uh, on our end, and, and of course, Brian Messerly is on this call. He, he really helps out with the live scoring. Uh, we got people here in the athletic department um, that help out, like Graham Rieger, who uh, is in the business office. He helps with the volunteers. So we've got a lot of people behind the scenes that that make sure it, it runs uh, smoothly. And, you know, golf's unique. We only have one event at home throughout 365 days. You know, compare that to volleyball or basketball, uh, baseball, where they have several. We only have one. So we have to you know, we don't get to test it out in non-conference, so to speak. We only have one chance, so hopefully we we do it right. Sean, is your lineup set, or do you still have qualifying events to determine the top five? Yeah, yeah, we still got a lot of qualifying left. Uh, actually, the, uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon, weather permitting, uh, we, sh we should wrap it up. And then uh, I, I do know that Max Green uh, and Trent Tipton – will be in the starting lineup. They earned that by their performance um, at the Hootie Bulls Bay Intercollegiate. Uh, both had strong showings there in our, our most recent competition. So they'll they'll be in our starting five. Uh, the other ones, hey, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, it's, it's very, very close. Uh, still a lot of golf to be played. And um, that's been one kind of, I guess frustrating thing for for us this year is like we we've had, you know, Max step up big time and and without a doubt having one of the best seasons uh in our school's history. But then it's been a revolving door for her really from the two spot always to the five spot. That means we're very deep. That means we're very competitive, but you would like to see a couple guys separate themselves and just, you know, that way you can count on them each week. But it's it's been a mixed bag all year, uh, which you know, is good and bad because a lot of guys have improved a ton from the fall to now and they're playing great golf and some guys have regressed and slid out of the lineup. Um, but, you know, some years are different than others. You know, you can pencil in four, four guys out of five some years, and then, like, this year it's just been a, a revolving door. But uh, in regards to this week, I know Max and Trent uh, will play, and then we'll probably find out Saturday or Sunday uh, who the other guys are. Hey, Coach, uh, I noticed last year was the highest – team score for a winner uh in the invitationals history was that just a one-off or could is there a reason for that and is would that translate to this year potentially well i think the uh the number one reason for that was the weather uh last year um going into the event last year we had days of 70 degrees even 80 degrees for like two straight weeks and then the practice round comes, and at the end of the practice round, this front came through, and the temperature just plummeted into the upper 30s and lower 40s, and it was windy, uh, and and winter hung around for, you know, 48 hours, happened to be when we were playing golf. Uh, so it, it presented a, a completely uh, different golf course than what we prepared for, and a completely, uh, a very, or a very challenging, uh, you know, competition. So, uh, and he had some great teams there, and namely Oklahoma State, who's, you know, won multiple national championships. They were there, and, uh, you know, um, it's just – it presented a really, really, really tough uh, setup. Uh, so I do believe maybe that was that was a one-off. Uh, I think this year the weather's looking pretty good for the tournament. It's not looking good for our qualifying uh, coming up here later. But uh, once we get to the tournament days, it's looking pretty good. So I do expect some pretty good scores. Uh, especially that last day, it's going to be in the 80s, a uh, little wind. Um, and usually, traditionally, the last day is is uh, kind of a shootout. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, what the scores are this year. Sean, you mentioned Max a little bit earlier. What's led to his improved play during the spring? And did you see some signs of that in the fall that he might be able to, to do what he's done? Well, Max is just a, a very steady uh, player. Um, you know, sometimes you ask about what, you know, what makes a, a player great and you can point to, you know, one or two things, but Max is just like really solid in every category, uh, which, which I think is when you look at his career as a, he won as a freshman, uh, it was an individual event at East Carolina, um, but he won as a freshman, played a little bit in the lineup, then the sophomore year, he played a lot more and now he's turned into a great leader. So um, that's, I think, 
the reason his progression has been pretty steady and pretty uh, pretty solid is that he's good at a lot of things. He hits the ball pretty straight. He hits it far enough. Uh, his bad shots are uh, are pretty good, and that's the game of golf. If your misses are in good spots, like you're going to have a chance to score, and that's kind of that's his game. If you go out and watch him, you know he he hits a lot of you know missed shots, but they're in the fairway or they're. 40 feet on the green. Then he has good speed on the green and he makes par and, you know, just kind of moves on. So super steady. Um, and that's kind of his personality too. I think it matches, you know, he's, he's pretty, pretty steady on and off the golf course and it's been exciting to see. And hopefully, um, you know, he can, he can win another one uh, before the the year's over with, cause he's having a great, great season. It's kind of funny, like the only guys that have won here, their name has started with an M. So maybe I need to recruit more like M's, you know, Max Sear and Mark Getz and now Max Green. So maybe next year my roster will just be nothing but guys, their name starts with M. So you were mentioning the setup of the golf course. As you and also as you mentioned, this is a, a pro level top tier course that can be set up really difficult. So what's your balance? What are you shooting for in the setup of the course? Um, well, I don't want to give too much away in case Marshall is, you know, watching this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they're watching this Zoom live. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But, um, you know, I, we do set it up pretty tough. Um, nothing crazy. Um, but Pete Dye is a championship course, like you said. It's over, well over 7,000 yards long. Um, but it's got a mix of some short par fours that you can definitely have wedge or less or maybe even drive the par fours. And then you have some that, you know, you might be hitting a hybrid four iron into there. Uh, you know, number 18 comes to mind. Number, uh, depending on the wind, number 14 comes to mind, number 10. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to play tough. Um, but we also have a, a round in there where we set it up to uh, have some exciting you know, uh, golf played. Not it's not easy. The the pins are definitely challenging, but we set it up in a way where if you take a few risks here and there, you you can make birdie. Um, whereas maybe some of the other rounds, it's you you just got to be patient, try to make par, move on to the next hole. But uh, we do set up one round where uh, you're going to get some some red numbers, and, and it's a lot of fun to watch. Sean, during the tournament, obviously you have there's the administrative responsibilities of putting the event on. But what is your strategy for following the guys throughout the tournament? Are you on a walkie talkie? Do you try to follow the scores? And if somebody's not doing well, you try to go over to them. What what is your uh, process during the actual tournament? Well, hopefully we've uh, we've prepared these guys enough to where they don't really need me or Coach Course. Although uh, Coach Course, Will Course, our assistant. We'll we'll be with a couple of guys mainly to uh, just keep them in a positive mindset, keep them you know focused on the next shot, the next hole. Uh, no matter if they're six under or six over, you know, just kind of staying in the moment does a great job uh, with our guys. And yeah, you're right. When you host a home event, there's so many other things I'm trying to coordinate that sometimes the last thing I get to do is actually go out and coach the guys, especially on Monday uh, with you know being opening day and a lot of ceremonies going on early. Uh, but hopefully towards the end of each round, I can get out there, uh, kind of let the guys get settled um, and then just kind of remind them like what the, what the strategy is. You know, we put the pin there for a reason. Here's your miss on this side. Uh, just kind of, you know, again, let them know there is a game plan for playing the hole. No matter. It doesn't matter if you're under par or over par. This the right shot's the right shot. Uh, just kind of remind them of that. But, uh, you know hopefully at that point they, they don't need me, but it's more just kind of a little comfort and they kind of bounce ideas off of me or give, give them somebody to talk to, uh, you know, during the round. And that's, that's really it. There's not much uh, coaching going on, hopefully at, at that point. Coach, I think that's all the questions for today. Uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for media for calling in and uh, best of luck next week. Thank you, and hopefully see everybody for the greatest shotgun start in college golf on Monday at 8.30 a.m.